So over the past two years, I think that we've all encountered these just played out headlines from the so-called fact checkers about Bill Gates and the Gates Foundation, which are just desperately trying to disassociate him from anything to do with population control. So we see over here from the Gates funded PolitiFact, Bill Gates talked about using vaccines to control population growth and they rated this as false. Then AP News, Gates Foundation wasn't named the Institute for Population Control. Then we have HuffPost, a long, strange history of Bill Gates' population control conspiracy theories. And then India Today, very similar. Bill Gates' vaccines and population control make for infectious conspiracy theories. <laughs> so where we're going to get started, guys, is over here with the Snopes fact check from last year in 2021. And then from there, I'm going to just destroy their narrative and show you how they are being misleading about all of this. Did Bill Gates' father run Planned Parenthood and teach his son to spread the gospel of eugenics? And you're in the subtitle, Conspiratorial Social Media Posts Baselessly Linked the Philanthropist to Eugenics. Okay, we're going to see about that. Now, for those of you that see the word eugenics and you just have no idea what the hell that means, you can check out my last video on the topic. But otherwise, it is essentially an extreme form of population control, guys, where the ruling class are essentially trying to sterilize and eliminate the majority of society. So with that said, let's get back to that Snopes article. So then they elaborate. They do concede that, yes, Bill Gates' father was part of Planned Parenthood. But they claim that, oh, you know, the idea that he was involved with eugenics appears to be nothing more than a wild assumption. And I want you to remember those words, a wild assumption. Okay. The publication then proceeds forward to engage in very low-level propaganda by saying that anybody that's basically stating there is a eugenics connection is an anti-abortion activist, of course. That's what it must be. <laughs> and then they state that the angle comes from the fact that Margaret Sanders, she had links. That's all, guys. Just, just links. And she died in 1966, which suggests that, you know, oh, it's, it's in the past. Long ago, we can move on now. And as you're going to find about all of this, that is pure, utter horseshit. <laughs> Of course, what this writer doesn't mention is that Margaret Sanger was a member of the American Eugenics Society, a life fellow of the British Eugenics Society, and Planned Parenthood was dominated, guys, by prominent eugenists during Margaret Sanger's life and after her death. So when Planned Parenthood was originally founded as the American Birth Control League, for example, one of the official incorporators alongside Margaret Sanger was the renowned eugenist Dr. Lydia de Volbus. Then in 1925, just a couple of years later, Dr. Clarence Cook Little, who was a former president of the American Eugenic Society, he became a director. And then later he was elected president in 1936. Then another former president of the American Eugenic Society, Professor Henry Pratt Fairchild, he served as the vice president of Planned Parenthood from 1939 to 1948. Another dude named Carlos Patton Blacker, he was the former secretary general of the British Eugenic Society. He served as Planned Parenthood International's first vice chairman from 1953 to 1959. And then after Margaret Sanger's death, a dude by the name of Alan Frank Huttmarker, the former vice president of the American Eugenic Society, he served as the president until his death in 1974. And it was during Dr. Huttmarker's presidency that Bill Gates' father was involved with Planned Parenthood. So how do I know this? Since any establishment source that you look up admits that, yes, he was involved with Planned Parenthood, but they never actually give specific dates. Well, if we refer to what has now become an infamous interview of Gates Jr. from 2003, he's asked by Bill Moyers, what inspired your interest in, and I quote, reproductive issues? To which he replied, when I was younger, my dad was head of Planned Parenthood, and it was very controversial to be involved with that. And so it's fascinating. At the dinner table, my parents were very good at sharing the things that they were doing and almost treating us like adults talking about that. Now, if what Bill Gates says is true here, guys, that he was just a child during these adult-like conversations, that would mean that his dad had to have been involved with Planned Parenthood sometime during the 1960s to early 1970s. Since Bill Gates was born in 1955, making him 18 and therefore an adult in 1973. Now, in addition to that, because I am relentless, as you know, in my pursuit for truth, I did manage to track down this old newspaper article from November 1971, where several new Planned Parenthood directors are named, including none other than William H. Gates of Seattle, Washington. Now, as already mentioned, the former vice president of the American Eugenics Society, Alan Frank Huttmarker, at this time was the president of Planned Parenthood. 
And whilst he was in this position at Planned Parenthood, he openly advocated forced sterilization on several different occasions. So, for example, over here on March 10th, 1966, in the Tuscaloosa News, they state that basically Hutmacher equates the threat of overpopulation with the nuclear threat. And he says that it's so bad, governments may have to act to limit families. And they quote him as saying, it may be taken out of the voluntary category. And we have this article of the year from the Robsonian, February 1970. Control of family size may become state issue, where they quote him as saying, this new dimension in the control of fertility has caused the serious question to arise as to whether or not the control of fertility remains solely the responsibility of the individual, or does the state have a responsibility? And we have this article from the same year, but in the month of September, in which he states that essentially the world has the next two decades to voluntarily slow the population growth. And then after this period, involuntary controls will have to be imposed. And it needs to be made very clear, guys, that it wasn't just Hutmark that held these crazy views within Planned Parenthood during this time. In this 1969 article from the New York Times, for example, which was actually focused primarily on praising Hutmark's presidency, one unnamed board member of Planned Parenthood was quoted as saying, what it all comes down to is that we want the poor to stop breeding while well, we retain our freedom to have large families. In 1978, when the famous disability activist Barbara Waxman Fiducia decided to volunteer at Planned Parenthood, she was quickly disappointed and disillusioned by what she called, and I quote, a strong eugenics mentality. And if all of that is not concerning enough, there is this incredibly incriminating letter from the aforementioned Carlos Patton Blacker to Dorothy Brush, both members of Planned Parenthood in which Blacker details something he calls, and I quote, crypto eugenics, which is where you seek to fulfill the aims of eugenics without disclosing what you are really aiming at and without mentioning the word. Unsurprisingly, during Blacker's time with Planned Parenthood, all the way up until Gates Sr.'s time with Planned Parenthood, the organization played a significant role in a coercive program in India which resulted in millions of civilians being sterilized and at least 1,774 people dying that we know about. What? Now, with this very important insight and understanding, we can now enter into the creation of the Gates Foundation. As everyone does know, the establishment credits Gates Sr. as guiding Bill Gates and the Gates Foundation's early beginnings. But what no one I know of ever investigate is the two key figures that Gates Senior credits as guiding the Gates Foundation's early beginning, which is Susan Kluwitz and Gordon Perkin. According to Susan Kluwitz's obituary, she majored in political science, and later she joined the United States Agency for International Development, which is another organization that played a key role in the sterilization campaign in India. According to Gates Sr.'s autobiography, he and Kluwer connected through their mutual work in Planned Parenthood. Now, another organization that Kluwer played a key role in was PATH, the Program for Appropriate Technology in Health, and this was under Gordon Perkin. Like Gates Sr. and Kluwer, Perkin also worked for Planned Parenthood. More significant, though, is he later worked for the Ford Foundation as, and I quote, a population advisor. Now, this is significant, guys, because during that time, the Ford Foundation spent more money on population control programs than any other organization in the entire world. In addition to that, that coercive sterilization program in India, the Ford Foundation played a lead role. In fact, just last year, the Ford Foundation, amongst others, very quietly acknowledged their role in financing eugenics in the past. With all that said, in 1977, Gordon Perkin founded PATH with funding from the Ford Foundation. And according to their own website, their, and I quote, earliest work began in China in 1979, the same year that China's government imposed their insane one-child program, which was eugenical in nature. In fact, according to their own website again, when they were approached by the United Nations in early 1979, they went to work right away. Gordon Perkin played a key role, and this led to a 15-year collaboration between PATH and the Chinese government. Indeed, according to this congressional roundtable, when one of the members of the United Nations is asked about their role in China, they do explain that in about 15 years, China became totally self-sufficient in high-quality international standard modern contraceptives, including pills, condoms, IUDs, injectables, and foam. We were assisted in this work by the Program of Appropriate Technology in Health, 
So to put this in its proper perspective, guys, Porth played a key role in the Chinese government's insane one-child program, which invariably culminated in 336 million abortions and 196 million sterilizations. And throughout this period, Perkin was the president and Kluwet was his vice president. Now, this is significant not just because Gates Sr. credits these two individuals with teaching him, his son, and Melinda about, and I quote, the field, but also because after China, Perkin became the Gates Foundation's first ever director of global health, and Kluwet served as the first assistant director. So as you can clearly see, guys, calling this a wild assumption or trying to make it seem as though there is no link to population control or eugenics is absolutely obscene. There is clearly a palpable, tangible, undeniable link between the Gates Foundation, the population control establishment and the eugenics establishment which precedes it. Now, as you can imagine, this goes so much deeper, guys. And I recommend checking out my last video just to gain a bit more insight and understanding about the topic of eugenics and crypto eugenics. But essentially, both this video and the last one are based on just a few pages of my recently published ebook, A History of Elitism, World Government and Population Control, which goes so much deeper down the proverbial rabbit hole, guys. Now, for those of you who are tied on cash or whatever it might be, because this info is so very urgent, I've actually created a less in-depth, truncated version, which you can read absolutely free on my website, anewkindofhuman.com or on the freethoughtproject.com. With that said, guys, remember, those who have the privilege to know have the duty to act. So please stand up, speak out, and share this. Until next time.